Do you know me? Do you recognize me? Chances are, you've probably seen me around. On the outside, I look like every other kid you may know. But on the inside, I have type 1 diabetes. Diabetes is not contagious. You can't catch it from me. In fact, people don't know why some kids get type 1 diabetes and some don't. There is no cure, but we know the symptoms and we can control it. And that will help keep me healthy and strong, just like you. So I bet you're curious. What is type 1 diabetes? An organ in your body, called the pancreas, produces an important hormone called insulin. Insulin is what turns the food you eat into energy, and we all know how important energy is to kids. But my body doesn't make any insulin, so when I eat, the sugar in my blood never turns into energy. The blood sugar levels just get higher and higher with no place to go. If left untreated, I could be at risk for organ damage. To my heart, liver, kidneys, and even my eyes. But don't worry. Luckily, there are ways I can add insulin to my body and keep my sugar levels normal, just like yours. Throughout the day, I check my blood sugar levels using a glucose meter. You may see me doing this in the classroom before I eat or begin any kind of strenuous exercise. Checking or testing involves taking a drop of blood, usually from my fingertips, and placing it on a special test strip in a glucose meter. Blood sugar levels are measured in milligrams per deciliter, and normal for someone with type 1 is usually between 80 and 180 milligrams per deciliter. Once I test my blood sugars, I know how much insulin I need to give. Kids like me usually need insulin shots several times a day. The exact number varies from person to person, but we take them at regular intervals every single day. Some kids use shots or insulin pens. It can hurt, but you get used to it. I use an insulin pump. It's the size of a cell phone, and I just slip it in my pocket. The pump gives me a small, steady dose of insulin through a plastic tube, which is attached to a small needle inserted into my skin. When I eat, I just push this button, and it gives me an extra amount of insulin. The insulin I inject goes into my system and helps my body change food into energy. Sounds simple, right? Not really. Sorry, I'm just a kid, not a scientist. Figuring out how much insulin I need depends on math and a lot of other different factors. They include how much I exercise, what I eat, my blood sugar level, my stress level, even how I'm growing. I play football, and when I play, I have to check my blood sugars before, halftime, and after the game. I like to have a sleepover with my girlfriends, but I have to be careful when I'm playing and having fun that I don't crash. Crash is when my blood sugar drops. It's not my fault if my blood sugars get out of control because I can't do anything about it. So please try to understand. Usually there are two problems with diabetes. One, of course, is if your blood sugar gets too high. This can happen if any of the following things occur. Not having taken enough insulin, eating more than usual, eating earlier than usual, eating food with higher carbohydrate content without injecting extra insulin, a clog in the insulin pump tubing, less exercise than normal, stress or illness. If my blood sugar is too high, I might have a reaction and I may need your help. Now look, don't be afraid. The most important thing you can do is stay calm and help me find a solution. Here are some of the symptoms that tell you my blood sugar levels are too high. Thirst, frequent urination, blurry vision, stomach pain, increased hunger, nausea, drowsiness, lethargy, or exhaustion, confusion, sweating, fruity, sweet, or wine-like odor on my breath, vomiting, inability to concentrate, and or weight loss. High blood sugars in the short term won't put me in danger right away, so if you see these warning signs, don't panic. But if my blood sugar is high for an extended period of time, then we've got a major problem. Because of my diabetes, I have an emergency care plan that tells you what to do if I experience any problems relating to my blood sugar levels. It was prepared by my healthcare provider in conjunction with my family and school personnel. If I am experiencing high blood sugar levels, the plan may instruct you to give me water or sugar-free drinks, monitor my blood sugar levels, and keep me from engaging in strenuous exercise. If you recognize my blood sugar levels are extremely high, immediately call my parents or a physician. 
please don't mess around with it yourself. You should only inject additional insulin if specifically told to do so. The other problem I have is low blood sugar levels. Low blood sugars in the short term are much more dangerous because they can lead me to insulin shock. Low blood sugar levels occur when I have too little food or too much insulin in my system. Here are some of the reasons why I may have low blood sugar levels. Taking more insulin than needed for the type of food I ate, not eating or eating later than usual. Here are some symptoms to look for if you think my blood sugar may be going low. Dizziness, nervousness, personality change or irrational behavior, blurry vision, shakiness, nausea, crying, sluggishness, sweating, poor coordination, hunger, lightheadedness, irritability, drowsiness, erratic response to questions, inability to concentrate. If I tell you I don't feel well or that I think my blood sugar levels are going low, never ever send me to the nurse's office or anywhere alone. Always make sure I have someone to accompany me. It's important to refer to my emergency care plan and monitor my blood sugar levels as the plan suggests. You should always take action based on the readings and not just on how I may or may not be acting. Low blood sugar levels are considered anything below 70. In this range, some kids will start to show symptoms, while others may still feel perfectly normal. If there is no way to test my blood sugar level to see if it is high or low, always treat me as if it's low. Feed me. Give me something to eat or drink that contains carbohydrates or fast-acting sugar, and then test my blood sugar level as soon as possible. But if I start showing some really serious symptoms, you might need to give me a glucagon shot. Glucagon is something you need to give me if I can't eat food or drink liquid anymore. If I start to shake, lose consciousness, or experience convulsions, lay me on my side, this will keep me from choking or hurting myself. Call the person trained to give me an injection of glucagon or call 911. Glucagon, like insulin, must be injected with a syringe into the skin. Glucagon is packaged in a kit. It comes with a vial of powder containing the medicine and a syringe filled with liquid to mix with the medicine. You should never mix glucagon in advance or after the expiration date printed on the kit and on the vial. Once you have administered the glucagon, it might take up to 10 minutes for the shot to cause the blood sugar to rise and the person to respond. Once conscious, you should monitor blood sugar levels and encourage the person with diabetes to eat or drink something with carbohydrates as soon as they are able. After mixing glucagon, always discard any unused portion. Handling situations like these can be very scary. Believe me, I know. But by reviewing the signs and symptoms regularly, you can prepare yourself in case there is an emergency. If you have specific questions about a student, contact the relevant diabetes provider and go to the JDRF website for more general information. I'm almost positive we've seen each other before. I'm a singer. I'm an animal lover. I'm a guitar player. I'm a cyclist. I'm a lacrosse player. See, I'm a regular kid. I just have type 1 diabetes. But now you know what it means. So don't be afraid. Learn all that you can. And smile at me the next time you see me, because I'm just like you.